Okay. Welcome everyone to this live Google Hangout uh, with Rio Plus 20 and young people. And with us today we have Mr. Brice Lalonde, who is the executive coordinator of Rio Plus 20, as well as young people around the world, and also hopefully people following us on this uh, live Google Hangout online. And uh, we also will be live on, on Twitter as well. So welcome everyone. Uh, I think we're going to start kicking this off because I know we have a lot of questions, both from our participants uh, participating in the Hangout, as well as online on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, so I'm just going to start directly by giving the floor to Mr. Bree Salon. And thank you so much for, for doing this, Mr. Bree. Well, thank you. And it's very nice to be with you. We are only three weeks from the conference. Uh, the Brazilians are working uh, very strong in, in the EU to have all the logistics, and the negotiators are right now discussing. So it's, it's an exciting moment. So thank you for being here. Thank you. And, and we're going to start by uh, jumping into the first question, who is coming from Sarah. So Sarah, you have the floor, please. Sarah, can you hear us? We're having some hiccup in the system. Sarah, are you with us? Okay, yeah. And uh, we're going to start, we jump to the next question instead and see if we can get Sarah back online. Um, so we have Emily um, with us. So please, you have the floor, Emily. My question is, non-formal education is no longer included in the text, but how can we as youth ensure that non-formal education is included in the final document? You know, if it's, if it's not formal, <laughs> is it so important to be in a formal document? I, I, I would like to say that it's so important, non-formal education, what you're doing is so important. So go on doing it, I would say. You know what's so important, I think, is I would like to say one thing is that you, you can always, you know, try to get things into the formal uh, negotiation, into the process, into the institutions. But what I think is much more important even is that youth could stand as a sort of an independent big power. So you have to organize, you have to be strong by yourself and not only be concerned by what will be in the text because, you know, these, these, these texts, well, is it going to be so important after all? What's important is what the action is on the ground, what you are doing, what people are going to do, what all the nations are going to do. So concentrate on that, please. It's much more important. And what you are doing is, is so great. So go on doing it. And if it's on the text or not, ah, it's not, it's not so important after all. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Breeze, for that. Uh, I'm going to turn back to Sarah. Are you with us now? Can you hear us? Perfect. So, Sarah, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, okay, so my first question is, um, what are some, and this is maybe something you have already spoke to, but what are some of the largest barriers to um, agreement within the negotiations mm -hmm. um, in the context of like the G77 and things like that, and what role can youth play in overcoming those barriers? You know that youth um, can play a major role. I think it's uh, in the history of mankind, it's the biggest innovation of youth which have ever existed. So it's, uh, it's a considerable power which just needs to organize, to, to sort of coagulate, to, to exist. Um, the, the barrier as well, you have a mistrust, a general mistrust in these negotiations will, because you have, a, I would say, a national framework where people come into the negotiations to defend the national interest and they, they don't sort of, it's more difficult for them to see the, the, the big picture, the planetary problems. And second, we have an economic crisis, which is quite important right now. So people are always, uh, that's the third problem, um, obsessed by short-term things. Now, the short-term is usually much more important than the long-term view. And youth should be here to give the long-term view, to force the governments to be in front of this, of this long-term view. So I think um, uh, your role is absolutely crucial. I I w we would need a sort of an uprising of youth to say to the head of states, come on, we need a long-term view. We need you to be more concerned by international problem and cooperation and not only to be obsessed on short-term national interest. That's difficult to say, but you could say it easier than, than me. Okay, 
Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lalonde. Uh, let's turn to the next question that will come from Michael. So please, Michael, you have the floor. Mr. Brees, um, in our world today, one billion people go to bed hungry, and 13 million, 13 percent of young people worldwide are out of work. How do you see a green economy agenda playing a critical role in addressing the growing youth unemployment and underemployment to ensure inclusive growth and sustainable development? Well, that's, that's actually the question the conference is going to address. That's exactly the matter of this conference. It's the matter of these international meetings. How can we, on one hand, answer to, to lift people out of poverty and give to everybody a decent life and, and on the other hand how can we respect the limits or the boundaries or, or the resources of the planet. You know I don't think a um, green economy is something that we can an option um, on the shelf which we can take uh, or not take. We have to go in any case in a, in a new sort of economy which is inclusive and which respects I would say the resources of nature. The problem with the economy is that it, when the economy started it was a world which was considered as unlimited, unlimited resources but a, a small amount of labor. But now it's the contrary. We know that the resources are limited and we have a lot of labor. So we have to invent that sort of path. In the next years after this conference we should have meetings on how do we live in cities, how do we live, um, uh, how do we produce food for, for, for all these people, how do we protect the oceans and all these different areas should give a huge amount of jobs. There's just been a report of the ILO saying that a green economy or a greener economy should provide a lot of jobs because lots of these jobs are local of, or at the level of the house where you have to do so many things. So the question is to reorient this economy to, in order to be, you know, to answer to the needs of the people. If you really answer to the needs of the people and not to the greed of some, you will get the jobs. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lalonde. Um, we, I'm just going to jump in with a question that we uh, received on Facebook from uh, Olavude and Ovais in, from Nigeria, uh, who actually wanted to know that uh, what role that young people can play if they don't have the possibility to go to Rio. And um, so, what role can they play in their communities uh, to ensure a successful outcome for Rio Plus 20? Thank you. What's going to be important is Rio Plus One. I mean, one, two, three, four, until Rio plus 20. Plus 20 means the next 20 years. And what's going to be so important is to do things in your own country, because this is where it starts. An international conference can do a lot, because it's going to raise awareness, it's, people are going to meet, people are going to talk about the best practices, talk examples, hopefully uh, agree to do things together collectively. But what's going to be very important is what people are going to do at home. And, and you don't need to be in Rio. I mean, it's good if you can come. It's very difficult. Now, you know, there's lots of problems of, of accommodment and things like that. But look, we are, we are on the Internet. Now youth have so many means to join, to link, to go together, to work together. Look what has happened everywhere in the world with these new springs and things happening and Occupy uh, Wall Street, etc. Et youth now has so many means of getting together and creating and being a power by itself. So what's going to be very important in Nigeria, like in every other country, is what you're going to do tomorrow and how the international community can help. So you, we know how to connect. We know how to do that. We have powerful organizations on the internet or, or organizations like Greenpeace or others. We know how to connect. So we're going to organize. What's going to be so important for youth and all of us is to organize to do things better together. And we hope the conference will help us, but, you know, we are strong by ourselves. Okay, thank you Mr. Lalonde for that. Uh, so we're going to turn to the next question which uh, comes from Cassia. So Cassia, please you have the floor. Um, thank you. And uh, what do you think is the role of emerging countries like Brazil in the development of a sustainable world society? Oh, it's absolutely uh, uh, very, very important. I mean, al already Brazil, at first, is the host country. So it has a, a lot of responsibilities. But also, um, uh, Brazil is also a champion of the green economy already. Uh, you know, um, uh, you see the energy, you see the alcohol for the cars, you see um, uh, your renewable sources of energy, you see the strength of the civil society, of the youth in Brazil, how they love the environment and the resources of Brazil, 
And, and the, the Brazilians have just invented also a new way of, of organizing these conferences with the, what the so-called dialogues, the Rio Dialogues for Sustainable Development. You know that online you can discuss on 10 major topics which are going to culminate in Rio just before the summit. And um, it means that all the people in the world can make recommendations to the head of states. This is very innovative. So Brazil is already playing a very important role and it has a vision. Brazil's vision is, well, let's try and, and see if in the next 20 years we're going to have um, a, a world of 7 or 8 billion people which will form a great middle class. How can this middle class live together? How can we invent a new model of development? So Brazil is already playing a, a very important pilot role, I would say, in this conference. Okay, thank you very much for that, Mr. Lalonde. Uh, the next question is coming from Alexandre, uh, so please, you have the floor. Uh, bonjour, uh, Mr. Lalonde, and thank you. Um, if you were 25 again and, and attending Rio Plus 20, what would be your most cheeky or audacious action, uh, a sort of last chance card to support the success of Rio Plus 20? Thank you. I suppose I wouldn't say it in public, huh? so we would organize after, but let's, let's have a meeting after and we'll, we'll talk about that. I think, um, you know, what's important now is um, the political dimension, and um, um, if I um, what it was in, in the power to do it, I would uh, try to see um, a certain amount of head of states or politicians from my own country to come with a statement beforehand, before you, because I think, you know, we need um, uh, to have more um, head of states involved in the preparation of Rio, not only to come and to sign and to take a picture, but to say how important it is and to try to influence all the other uh, head of states. So, um, you know, that, that would be, I think, a, an important thing. But uh, there's lots of other ways of doing things, um, which um, uh, hmm, when, when I was younger, I, I, I would have done, perhaps, so we'll talk of that later, okay? Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Lalonde. Uh, so we have the next speaker uh, will be Sarah with her second question. So please, Sarah, you have the floor. Okay, thank you. So I'm wondering well, what some of uh, recommendations or proposals that maybe you have yourself um, for, for reconciling like the global north and south, as you mentioned before, the sort of mistrust there, possibly uh, developing after re re uh, the Earth Summit in 92, and so what are some of those sort of, uh, what are some of the strategies that you would use for reconciling that? Well, I think um, in general, um, uh, when countries or head of states um, uh, commit to something, they should fulfill the commitments. So <laughs> it is also that, uh, you know, that's uh, the, the way now that more and more um, uh, we have to invent in Rio a way of holding people accountable of their pledges or commitments. And this is something which doesn't exist enough in the international community. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, what's, what's very interesting and exciting in, in the Rio Plus 20 process is that most countries now agree on the idea of setting uh, sustainable development goals in the next three years um, uh, to follow up uh, or to replace or to merge with the Millennium Development Goals. The Millennium Development Goals were addressing poverty. And so um, uh, there it's the issue of uh, having a, a better organization for, for cooperation, for development. How can we do that? You know, there was a discussion on, um, uh, on uh, innovative financing for development, uh, discussion on a, uh, the idea of a tax on financial transactions. It's going to be on the table. It's probably not going to be adopted yet, but, you know, the discussion is improving. It was very marginalized, a very, a very proposal coming from the from very marginalized um, people um, 20 years ago, and now it's central. People agree it could be possible. But the Sustainable Development Goals would address the whole family of nations as a whole. And um, it's a very important step. It could be a very important step, because what's so important and, uh, in the trust is doing things together for the same goal. Not only, you know, having donors, recipients, and having all these discussions. Of course, it has to be, it has to exist. But if we do things together for the humankind and for the planet, well, we'll get much better a sense of, of international community. I think that would be so important. Okay, thank you very mu much, Lalonde. And I, uh, I'm going to follow up a little bit on what you said with um, working together. Uh, we have a question from Luciano Frontelle from Twitter, uh, who says, that youth, youth has the, the energy to act, but how can we assure that 
young people can partner in developing solutions instead of only being consulted in the process? <laughs> I, you know, you, you must not, if I dare say, you don't only ask for the permission to do something, you do it. And I think that's the strength of youth. I mean, you know, youth doesn't always ask for the permission. You're, you're changing the world already by what you're doing in your countries, by all the actions, by the volunteerism, by the campaigns. I mean, look at these huge campaigns and all these new tools. Youth uses much better than the elders, the internet and all that. You have all these avoirs and uh, all these uh, incredible um, petitions, signatures all around the world. So, so the world is changing and you are changing it without even noticing it, you see. So, so of course, I think um, uh, in this process of Rio Plus 20, never the major groups, as we call them, youth is one of the major groups of the civil society, business, local governments, never they have they been more associated. The, and each, each of the conferences, youth is more associated in the, in the work of the diplomats. And probably we're going to come out with a sustainable development forum or an organization which is going to improve the discussion on sustainable development in the United Nations and very probably the place of youth and civil society will be important inside of this forum to discuss also directly, not to be only consulted, but to discuss on the achievement of the goals on sustainable development policies in countries. So, you know, things are, are moving and, and, and improving all the time. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Lalonde. I, I actually have a, another question from Twitter. Um, what, would you what do you reply to, to young people who think that Rio is only a, a closed forum of diplomats in, in expensive suits? <laughs> well, um, uh, I think um, these conferences are much more than that. They are sort of a point, a rendezvous, we say in French, uh, of all of, of the planet, of the people of the planet. And um, uh, the outcome of this, of this conference will not only be the, the diplomatic text uh, agreed by the diplomats or the head of states, and besides, head of states and politicians also have an influence. Diplomats prepare the discussions and politicians often decide. But there's going to be lots of other outcomes. As I said, I was talking about the dialogues. These dialogues are going to produce recommendations, 30 recommendations to be conveyed to the head of states coming directly from civil society. This is going to be the People's Summit. The People's Summit is going to be very important also. And I, I think I, I, can, I can probably also say that um, uh, we in the United Nations are going to go to, these, to the summits, to all the meetings, to hear the recommendations and to take them into account. So, you know, there's going to be... 50,000 people or, or, or probably even more in Rio. So it's much more than only meeting in diplomats or, or in, in suits, on expensive suits. Perhaps some diplomats also have unexpensive suits also. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Lalonde. Uh, so next question is coming from Emily. So please, Emily, you have the floor. Are you planning to meet with youth representatives in New York? during the next couple of days and in Rio, how do you plan to support youth who are engaging in the Rio Plus 20 process? I'm sure going to meet them, yes, as, 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 as many times as I can and um, as many times as it's necessary in New York or, or in, uh, in Rio. And you know there is, um, for instance, um, something which was interesting which um, uh, has been agreed by the diplomats, e even if it's in expensive suits. They have agreed that um, uh, the winner of a contest date of history, for instance, youth, uh, there was a very famous speech in 92 by Mrs. Severn Suzuki, the, the, the speech of youth to the diplomats. Uh, and um, uh, now there's been a contest. Who's going to, who, who's going to have the win the best uh, address to the diplomats coming from the youth and there's already I think somebody from New Zealand who has won this contest who's going to be able to speak to the diplomats and, and give the message of youth. So you know we need, uh, we need youth and we, we really do need youth because you know elders they, get, they sometimes become a bit blasé uh, you know and all that a bit cynical about everything and we need the strength and the enthusiasm of youth. So each time I see um, people uh, you know the, the youth or people on the ground doing things I like uh, I feel encouraged and I go on stronger. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mr. Lalonde. Um, so the next question is coming from Michael. So Michael, please, you have the floor. Uh, Mr. Lalonde, in the State of the World's Volunteerism report by the UNV, um, it states that volunteerism has so far been underexploited in addressing sustainable development challenges and poverty reduction. 
To what extent do you think youth volunteerism and meaningful participation can support the implementation of the Rio Plus 20 outcomes? And what do you think would be the institutional structures that would be required? Well, I, I think that's a very important question. It mustn't of contradict the, the idea that we also need jobs. But um, I, I think um, uh, nothing can work without, without volunteerism. Nothing can, can be done, even in the economy, because, you know, so many, people, so many things happen for free. Because you have uh, people working in the house, uh, people taking care of the children. You have, uh, even now we've discovered that um, uh, the economy would not even work without all these things which are being given for free by people who love each other, who do it because uh, that's the way you have to do it. Uh, or even it, there is a relation with the idea that now in the economy we have to go beyond GDP because GDP is only what you sell, what you buy, and it doesn't account for everything, especially for what, what people give freely in the, in the daily life or, or, or what nature gives. So the volunteerism is very important, but it has to be organized. And you're not volunteer all your life, I suppose. You, you know, you, you, when you can, when you're perhaps younger, or when you have time to do it. So I think it, it must be better organized, and probably we should need to take lessons from your report and from this organization of the United Nations. Lots of things are happening in the, for instance, cooperation, in development with volunteers, and that's a fantastic job we have to recognize. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Mr. Lalonde. Um, I'm just going to jump in with, the, with another question that we, we got on Twitter. Um, is there any space for, for marginalized groups of young people, like indigenous uh, people with indigenous background or young women, uh, to present statements uh, from their communities in Rio Plus 20? Well, certainly, the issue um, there is, um, uh, well, indigenous people are one of the major groups which are consulted uh, during this process, which have a say. And of course, um, uh, in different countries, you have a different situation where indigenous people are much more important than in other countries. So uh, this is going to be important in, in Latin America or South America, obviously. Women are also um, a major group, and um, lots of um, uh, studies show that uh, the, the situation of women in different countries is one of the prerequisites, I mean, of, of sustainable development because they play such an important role. And of course, um, uh, we need to have um, a much stronger equality of conditions between uh, um, the genders. So it's, this is also, I would say, I mean, the, the, the voices of the women are heard in, in, this, um, uh, in this negotiation, perhaps not enough in the outcome. This is something which is very important in lots of countries, obviously. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Lalonde. Um, so next question is coming from Katia. So please, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, which measures do you think are necessary to deal with the food crisis? Do you think our eating habits, like eat lots of meat and diary, are sustainable? <laughs> uh, uh, well, obviously, um, uh, some of some countries produce lots of junk food, and um, uh, in in a period where we need, uh, to, you know, to concentrate on. Uh, answering to everybody's needs, uh, it's sometimes seen as a sort of a scandal, a scandal to produce junk food and lots of waste. But of course, um, you know, the situation is different from one country to another. I think overall we have to invent a new agriculture. The new agriculture, you know, is, is the agriculture which is going to feed them uh, um, 8 billion people in 2030 without using more land, more water, or more energy because we don't have enough of, of that. It's scarce resources now and we have to integrate ecology with agronomy, that's going to be the new, the new agriculture. Uh, you know, uh, f of course, obviously, too much meat, you have to have cattle, and, you, and the cattle, for instance, encroaches in forests and things like that, so that's one of, one of our problems. We know, we know the laws of producing meat, but sometimes you can have good cattle, uh, and sometimes you can have bad soya, you know, with uh, huge industrial pesticides, and I don't know what. So you have to balance uh, everything and, and look the way things are produced. To see how things are produced is going to be one of the most important, um, you know, transformations in the green economy or in the trade. How did you produce this food? How did you produce this cattle? How did you produce this soja? And how is it equitable or not, uh, etc. So this is going to be, I think, one of the most important trends in the next years. How can we invent this new agriculture? How can we do it better? 
obviously in, in developing countries we need to in, increase the, the productivity by, by, by land, by units of lands and we have to concentrate also on not, not so much waste of the crop. How, do you, how can you conserve the crops after? But overall, uh, we have to see the nexus, you know, the nexus with energy and water because you cannot produce food if you don't have energy or water and that's one of the, of the new tasks and challenges of humankind in the next years. Perfect. Thank you so much, Mr. Lalonde. Uh, and the next question is coming from Alexandra. So please, you have the floor. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Young people are usually encouraged to try and fail as long as they learn from their failures. Uh, how can we ensure we will take the most out of Rio Plus 20 even if it's a failure? <laughs> well, you'll have to do something about that. You, the youth, huh? <laughs> um, we've got these meetings every 10 years or 20 years um, um, and I was in Stockholm and in Rio 92 and now <laughs> it's going to be a Rio 2012. Uh, I, I think nevertheless, you know, things are improving because there is a huge awareness of this. Everybody agrees. And for instance, um, uh, the, the, word, the word ecology did not exist um, uh, when I was a student, you know, it was not in the dictionary. Now, now of course, um, uh, everybody believes that it's one important part of the public policies. In any case, everywhere, there is no question about it. So how are we going to learn? Well, I suppose um, that's where politics should, should come. Um, we, the youth um, should um, learn how to you know, organize, to work collectively, and to change the institutions of their own countries, and to change the politics of their own countries. One thing which for me is so important is that there's nobody in charge of the planet in, in any government because nobody thinks that in the government you should have somebody in charge of the planet. But if in every government of the world there was somebody in charge of the planet, they would meet and somebody would take care of the planet. For instance, one of the questions in Rio Plus 20 will be the oceans. Oceans beyond national jurisdictions. Who's taking care of the oceans beyond national jurisdictions? Because it's nobody's, it's everybody's. Ah, so that's one of the questions we have to address. And so this is where you, the youth, are so important. You are going to be the politicians in the next years. Huh? Uh, we need you. So you have to change, um, you know, you have to take into account the failures or, or, the, or the mistakes. But please don't forget that, that the state of the world does not only depend on one conference. It depends on the early, the daily action of everybody. That's where the question on volunteerism was so important. The state of the planet and the planet depends on the people. The people, it's you also. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Lalonde. I'm just going to ask a quick question uh, that we received on, on Twitter. Um, so how can we have young entrepreneurs at Silicon Valley engaged in green economy? I go to speak to them. <laughs> Create your own, your own business. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's already a lot of, of, of entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley which believe that, for instance, solar energy is one of the, of the answers. And, and lots of solutions have been are created in the Silicon Valley or elsewhere. And we need all this innovation. Uh, you know, we need, we need also to be optimistic, you know, even though sometimes you, we hear some very dire reports on the situation, we have to believe it's possible. You know, the question of, of, of all what we are doing is to have a better life tomorrow. What is the better, how, how can we build together a better life and how can we use the entrepreneurs to, to do that? You know, there is a discussion also right now in Rio Plus 20 about the, the role of the markets, the regulation and all that. We say in France that markets are good servants but bad masters. Bad masters because this means that you, we have to have also a, a, a place or a way where collective will is going to be um, put on the table and you say this is the goal where we need to go and after we discuss with the, with the public, with the private companies and the, and the business, how can we help to get together to this goal we have decided collectively? So that's, that's one, one of, the, of the questions also, a discussion in, in Rio. But obviously we need business and we need young entrepreneurs which believe that the business can deliver. Uh, you know what, um, uh, I would also like myself to, to, <laughs> to return the questions and to say, listen, uh, you guys, what do you expect from Rio? What do what, what, what you want? What do you, what you expect and what do you want to do? You, can, you, can we start that sort of also exchange? Yeah, it's so helpful. Okay, so um, we have um, Sarah who is going to provide her answer to the question. Please, you have the floor. 
Okay, thank you. Um, I well, I expect, um, dis despite the uh, reputation of negotiations remaining sort of stagnant, that this time there's there's so much access to information, and and youth are so well connected, and we are so many, so many, and so informed that this will probably. My expectation is that huge amounts of awareness will be. Um, race about um, sustainable uh, about development practices and creating sustainable development practices, and um, and that that organization will start like those those youth meeting youth from large 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 uh, industrialized countries, meeting youth from um, new rising up countries. Like we will all um, start to form this bond and this solidarity, and if we can maintain that post Rio, I think it's very critical. So the, I expect that this awareness will be raised at Rio, and it has been raised uh, in the run-up to Rio. But to maintain that connection and that solidarity, like between our after Rio, is going to be extremely um, crucial to uh, bringing those outcomes home, whether they be what we want or not. But bringing that message home. So that's I expect. That's what I expect to happen, like from Rio and post Rio. Super. Let's work together. Thank you so much, Sarah, uh, for providing that. Uh, so the next answer will come from Emily. Please, you have the floor. I also agree with Sarah that Rio Plus 20 is a really good um, opportunity for youth to network even further, um, to take those actions on the ground and work together. Um, I also expect that countries will commit to mitigating violence that many women face on a daily basis by taking action on practices that perpetuate a cycle of violence. I expect that countries will make a commitment to education, including non-formal education, so that previously agreed upon goals are met. I also expect that the successes of the UNESCO Decade for Education are built upon. We need to learn our way to sustainable solutions. Okay, thank you very much for that, Emily. Uh, so next uh, answer will come from Michael. Michael, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Uh, I feel that um, Rio Plus 20 is a perfect opportunity for government, uh, the private sector, and young people as well to step up their, uh, our commitments towards a comprehensive and inclusive green growth. Um, at Rio Plus 20, I would want to see widespread endorsement of and also commitment to green growth with clear timelines and a means of financing these commitments. And also, I think that meaningful youth participation should be at the heart of all these. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, so, Kasia, uh, you have the floor, please. Thank you. Um, I hope that Rio Plus 20 helps societies to face the current ethical crisis we, we must deal with which, in my opinion, is the origin of all the crises we face right now. I also expect an ambitious plan that enables nations to take practical actions towards sustainable development. Finally, I hope a new economy that includes all kinds of beings, not only humans, in, the, in, in sustainable development. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, okay, so Alexander, uh, you're next up. Thanks. Yes. Um, so from Rio plus 20, I expect, uh, I hope actually to see uh, more cooperation and less negotiation than usual. And maybe also young people um, sort of taking their responsibility and doing their, their own stuff and not waiting everything from someone else. Um, I also hope to see that uh, decisions will be taken uh, for the long-term interest uh, more than what is usually happening. And uh, from you, Mr. Lalonde, I, I hope to get a private answer from my first question. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you very much, Alexander. I just have a, a question that we received on Twitter again. And it relates to the outcome of, of Copenhagen, and many many people viewed it as a as a failure. 
And I just wanted to ask you if you see any parallels to Rio Plus 20 and, and how we can overcome those um, uh, failures that many people saw uh, then and what, what's different this time? Well, um, uh, Copenhagen was uh, on one uh, subject which was um, uh, uh, the climate and the mitigation of, of the climate change and um, uh, was it a, a failure or not? Uh, you know I was I was uh, part of Copenhagen and uh, I, I had the chance of seeing the, uh, the head of states uh, as you know the head of states arrived at the last minute and um, suddenly found that uh, there was no agreement so they worked very hard for a whole day and a whole night and a little setting uh, in incredible conditions with no translation and things like that and agreed to get an accord. But uh, this accord, um, the Copenhagen Accord, was not agreed upon by the United Nations, by, by all negotiators because they were not part of the little room in the night during the negotiations. So it was not agreed, but it was agreed one year later in Cancun. Okay, so I mean, is it a failure or not? They did their job. But I mean, the, the conditions were, were different and it was about something which would have been, which is binding. Rio plus 20 is the big picture. I mean, it's about everything. It's about everybody. Um, uh, it's not binding because, unfortunately or not, uh, for the time being, international agreements are not so binding. But it's 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 very different. You don't have that sort of um, uh, necessity of getting to an agreement or something. People are going to be more relaxed, and I suppose we're going to agree on the text beforehand. So the so the head of states will come, and and probably perhaps we'll discuss on one or two topics. But that's all. So it is, it is different. But what you are saying is also, I think, um, uh, linked to um, uh, the way the international community works, the way it organizes its conferences. This should be improved. I, I believe we should improve it. I, I believe um, uh, even that, um, that one of the difficulties of these international discussions is that there is no, I would say, initiative coming from, from the international community, li like, for instance, from the Secretariat of the United Nations, to make a proposal. I propose this. And after countries discuss, or I propose a sort of a roadmap uh, for all of the countries, or each of the countries, what do you think about this or this proposal? No. Things have to come from the countries themselves, because it's country-driven. So that's, what, that's what's so difficult. How can we pass from an international organization to an organization which can probably do a little more and help a little more. You know, most countries are very, very jealous of sovereignty and for the time being, uh, the, the, the national sovereignty, well, that's more important for the, than the international fraternity, I would say, unfortunately. Okay, thank you very much for that, Mr. Lalonde. Um, I don't know if, you, if we're, st we're starting to run out of time. Uh, would you like to, to make a conclusion of the discussion that we had today? Can I try to do that? Listen, I, I, was, I was very happy of this discussion and, and um, I think it's so important that most, more and more people feel committed and more and more young people feel committed. We know that sustainable development is impossible without having everybody embarked uh, and involved. So we talked about business, we should also talk about local governments, how, it's how cities are so important because lots of things happen in cities, lots of people live in cities and in cities the, the mayors or the municipal organization has lots of powers to do things, the building code, the transport system, etc, etc. So we need to have everybody embarked and how can we invent you know, these new ways of discussing? Um, the Rio Plus 20 is going to be about very, very, very simple things which we have to organize in the next years. How do we produce food um, without um, uh, using more land or, or new nutrients which go into the sea after? How can we have fish in the ocean in, in, in the next 20 years? How can we uh, live in cities? How can we organize transports? Very simple day, uh, life of the, you know, daily life problems which we have to solve together. So if we don't solve these problems, very simple daily life problems, I'm a bit very complicated to solve, we will have difficulties to attain, you know, the climate, biodiversity uh, conventions to, to fulfill all our commitments. So this is what we need. We need imagination. We need to think of things which are out of the box. So this is typically something that youth can bring. Please think out of the box and come with your proposals which would, which would make the help the diplomats to think of new solutions because you know diplomats are very nice but uh, sometimes uh, they, they, they are not the invent they're not in the business they're not in cities they are only diplomats so, so if you don't feed them with new proposals they won't find the solution this is why we all need to work together and this is why it's so nice to discuss with you 
Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Lalonde. Um, it's been it's been a pleasure, and I, I I have to thank all our participants for bringing in such an interesting questions uh, and for asking uh, tough questions as well. And so thank you to all of you um, for this discussion, and, and let's keep continue the discussion on, on Twitter and um, for those of you who join us um, on Google on the Google Hangout. Uh, so once again, Mr. Lalonde, thank you so much for taking your time. Uh, and thanks to all of our participants um, for, for also taking your time. And so, yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. See you, Mario. Bye.